All right, so 8.3 is trigonometry. Do not get all nervous thinking that we're teaching you trig. We're going to just talk about the basic foundation. And we talk about ratios of side lengths with trig in relationship to certain angles. They will always be the acute angles within the triangle. So we never talk about what the relationship, the side lengths are with our 90 degree angle, it's always the other two acute angles. So let's talk about the side lengths first. And there's three words up there that say hypotenuse, adjacent, and opposite. I've highlighted angle B to start. We could have also used angle A, but we're just going to do angle B to start. So the side opposite of angle B, and we've been practic practicing this so far, so you should realize that this is the side opposite. And I just always notate that with an O for opposite. Okay, is the side AC. If we're talking about adjacent, if you remember back in like chapter one, we talked about having adjacent angles, meaning they're next to or connected. Well, we have actually two sides that are connected to angle B, but one side we already know has a specific name, and that's the hypotenuse because that's across from the 90. So we will never label the hypotenuse adjacent. It will always be the other side there. So we have the adjacent side BC. All right, so why is this important? This is how we name our ratios and form our ratios in relationship to an angle. There are three different trigonometry functions that we're gonna talk about and they have specific names. You have to memorize them by what the ratio states. So the first one is called sine, okay? And then I went ahead and put B there because we're talking about the sine of angle B. It's in the re, uh, ratio, Okay, side of B is equal to the opposite leg, so that would be side AC, divided by the hypotenuse, which would be side BA. So we have numbers, and we can write the ratio as, as follows. Sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so that's the first trig fun function is sine. The second one that we need to memorize is cosine. And once again, I'm just putting angle B there because that's what we have highlighted. That's what we're given. So cosine of B is the adjacent leg. So now we're going to be using that leg, which is BC, divided by, once again, the hypotenuse, BA. So both the cosine and the sine have the hypotenuse as the denominator. But one uses the opposite leg, the other one uses the adjacent leg. So that's the second trig function. The third and final one is called tangent. So the tangent of B does not use the hypotenuse at all, okay? The tangent of B uses the side opposite. So the side opposite is AC divided by the adjacent side, which is BC. So no hypotenuse there. So we need to memorize these equations because there's an equal sign. We're also, we're going to eventually solve some equations for X X for missing side lengths. But let's just make sure we remember the ratio. This is a really fun saying that we remember the sine, cosine, and tangent ratios by. So Katoa. Okay? So how we remember that is so stands for sine equals opposite divided by hypotenuse. And I always write it also like S equals O over H. Okay, opposite divided by hypotenuse. So that helps you remember too, the order. Second one, the co cosine is C equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay, C-A-H. And TOA, the last one, is tangent equals opposite over adjacent. So for tests and quizzes, I tell you, write SOCA TOA at the top of your test. So write these little equations here so you can remember the order. Now, it's really important if you're going to use our way of remembering sine, cosine, and tangent that you say it S O H as so, C A H as ka. Otherwise, the O and the A tend to sound the same. You're going to mess yourself up. Okay? So we've got, again, sine, cosine, tangent. And just like Ms. White said, you want to put it on the top of your tests and quizzes. Also put it at the top of your practice worksheets and any practice we do together. All right. So First thing we're going to do is not make necessarily calculations, but just set up those side ratios. And we're going to find the sine of R and the sine of S in each of these triangles. It says very specifically, write each answer as a fraction and as a decimal. 
round the three decimal places if necessary. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this triangle right here, and we're going to look for sine of angle R. So based on angle R, we're going to go through and identify the opposite, the adjacent, and the hypotenuse. Well, the hypotenuse is the easy one. It's the one across from 90 degrees. The opposite would be side TS, so that's going to be O. And then the other guy is my adjacent. Again, we said sine is SOH, or S equals O over H. Cosine, CAH. Tangent, TOA. Um, so we can set these up so we can help figure out what ratio we need to do. All right, so we're focusing on sine right now. Well, sine is O over H, so the sine of angle R is equal to O is 15, H is 25. Now, I want to simplify this fraction. And 15 and 25, divide both of them by 5, and your simplified fraction is going to be 3 fifths. So this is your answer for sine of R. As a decimal, your answer is 0.6. Okay, so remember to give both answers. Okay, I'm going to give myself a little bit of room. Get rid of those since we're not using them. We'll move sine one step at a time over to the other side. And we'll work on the sine of S. So again, S. This is going to change which leg becomes my opposite and which leg becomes my adjacent, but 25 is still my hypotenuse. This time my opposite is 20. My adjacent is 15. Again, sine is still O over H. So sine of S is equal to my opposite 20 over 25. This fraction also simplifies. Divide again both by 5, and this gives me 4 fifths. As a fraction, it's 4 fifths. As a decimal, it's 0 point of A and B. So cosine CAH, or C equals adjacent divided by hypotenuse, is what we're going to focus on. We've got the same triangle up here twice. I will find cosine of A, you guys find cosine of B. So based on angle A, my adjacent side is 48, my opposite is 20, my hypotenuse is 52. Cosine of A is equal to the adjacent, 48, divided by the hypotenuse, 52. I can simplify that fraction, and I get both of those are divisible by 4. We get 12 over 13. Okay? As a decimal, and again, round to, oh, they changed the directions, four decimal places. We're going to get 0.923, and there's a 0, 07 here, so that's going to be 1 at the end. Okay? All right, last one to practice with is tangent. So remember, tangent is TOA or T equals O divided by A. So let's go ahead. They have tangent of B and tangent of C. So first off, we're going to do tangent of B. Opposite gives me 48 divided by adjacent, which is 14. Make sure you do not include the hypotenuse in this one. So just anytime you see tangent, I just mark off the hypotenuse so you don't mess it up. So 48 divided by 14 is our fraction. And in simplified form, that's 24 over 7. And for decimal, um, let's see the directions as rounded to the nearest tenth. So nearest tenth is 3.4, it's first decimal point. Okay, so I'm gonna pull my calculator out and there's really important information here. It says your calculator must be in degree. So go ahead, get your calculators out. We'll work on this together. We're gonna to go to mode. It's the little red button that you're looking at right here. I've got my arrow pointing to it, right next to second. And we wanna change where it says radian, the third one down, to degree. So arrow over to degree, hit enter. Which I can't see my enter right now. We'll hit enter. Notice that it highlights degree and comes over. So now we can get out of there, and you can do that by hitting second and then mode again, and it'll get you back to your main screen. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go back to work on our actual thing. Remember, we're still using Sokotoa. Okay, so Sine angle degree equals the opposite of the hypotenuse. And the reason the angle degree is there is because we're actually going to plug in whatever that angle measure is. 
the opposite of our hypotenuse, one of those is most likely going to be x, or we're actually going to go plug it into our calculator, the ratio, and figure out what's going on. All right, so here's our first example. Notice they only gave us one acute angle. Okay? So we're going to use that acute angle, 63 degrees, and figure out what information do we have. Well, the 13 is my opposite side, and the x, this guy, is my adjacent side. All right, so, so, uh, Toa, which one uses O and A? Well, we can't, we don't have A, so it's not sine or cosine. We must be using tangent. So you've always got to identify which trig ratio you're going to set up first. So tangent equals opposite over adjacent. The way I'm going to write this is tangent of, in parentheses, my angle measure, which is 63 degrees, is equal to my opposite, 13, over my adjacent, which is x. All right, so how do we solve this? How do I get this set up so that we can get it in our calculator? And I always like to use the shortcut. If x is on the bottom, like this, then I'm going to switch it with tangent of 63. Note to yourselves, this is not tangent times 63, this is one entire term, all right? So when I go to my calculator, we're looking at the equation x equals 13 divided by tangent of 63. All right, so let me go back to my calculator. We'll pull that up. And we're going to do tangent of, see if we can get everything to show at once. So we've got x equals tangent of 63. All right, so we're going to find tangent of 63 by, our, by doing 13 divided by, and notice you have sine, cosine, and tangent, but we're going to do tangent of 63, close your parentheses, and hit enter. Okay, so it gives it to us as a decimal. It's not going to give us a fraction. You could try it all day long. Math, hit enter twice, and since it doesn't give us back a fraction, there is no fraction to do. So this answer right here is how I would do it in my calculator. 13 divided by a tangent of 63. So our answer is, and it doesn't tell us in where to round to, so you can round wherever is appropriate. I'm going to say that my answer is 6.6. .6. You could say 6.62. Or you could try 6.624. So all of these are appropriate answers for x. Notice x was our adjacent side. Okay? All right, so let's practice a little bit more within our calculator and solving for side lengths. Okay? So this time we're going to be solving for a and b. But we'll just start with how we've done it and how Ms. Hurst showed you. Okay, we'll start with A. We'll pretend like we're going to solve A first. So, once again, 57. This is opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. So, if I'm going to solve for A, we're going to use 14 and A, which gives us O and A. And I'll just leave this up here. So, ka, toa. So, O and A is, once again, tangent. So, we're going to do the tangent of 57, the angle degree, equals... Opposite, 14, divided by adjacent A. So remember the little shortcut. If A or the variables on the bottom, they switch places. So you get A to equal 14 divided by the tangent of 57. So when you type that in your calculator, you should get about 9.1, which is what A equals. Okay? So let's go ahead and solve for B. B is our hypotenuse, and I'm going to use 14 because it's a whole number and it just is nicer to me. So O and H are my two that I'm going to use. O and H leaves us the sign. So we're going to set up our proportion the same way as tangent, except for we need to make sure that we have opposite and hypotenuse. So the sine of 57 equals opposite 14 over hypotenuse B. Variables on the bottom, we can solve the same way and switch places. So B equals 14 divided by the sine of 57. And you type that all in and you should get 16.7. Okay, so those are our two answers for A and B. Now, we know that the hypotenuse is supposed to be the longest side of the triangle. If for some reason you don't get something bigger than 14 or bigger than 9, you might want to check your math again. It needs to be bigger. 
All right, so go ahead and try this one on your own, solving for A and B.